so uh, hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, philosophers of the early modern era. Um, as you can see, I don't have my partners with me, but like, I'm going to be focusing on Roger Bacon and he studied metaphysics. Uh, as you can see, he was born in uh, the Bronx in 2014. So Roger Bacon, uh, Roger Bacon was an uh, English philosopher. He was born in Oxford, England, in 1220, but moved to pa pa Paris later on. Uh, he was born in a wealthy family, so like back then, all the luxuries of uh, reading and like writing, like stuff like literature, he had at his disposal. So like, he pretty much had education from around, like from an early age. Um, of course, he moved to Paris later, like in his university years, because he wanted to pursue. Uh, well, he wanted to uh, become part of the Franciscans. Am I saying right? Yeah, the that religious group. Uh, there is no reason, like, well, it didn't, it didn't explain why he didn't want to do it. He just thought that was the best way to improve his learning, so that he did that. Um, as I said, when he moved to Paris, Paris he studied the fields of mathematics, optics, astronomy, alchemy, and languages. He believed that those were like the main and like the strongest fields that like study. Um, basically, he he studied in the University of uh, yeah, like he studied in the University of Paris for most of his time, for most of his years. L later, uh, later though, he became a teacher there. But um, in 1947, he kind of like took in, like in another direction of his studies because he stopped teaching and then he started doing like more like scientific research. Um, so basically, this I found this pretty interesting. Um, he was one of the first Western philosophers, like not Western philosophers, but like Western scientists to develop the, like, well not really develop, but like, kind of like to develop the blueprint. Uh, blueprints for like gunpowder. This was not being done before. The reason why he did not proceed to like he, like keep on pushing for this this uh, discovery to actually make you know you know for it for it to happen is because he knew that people were gonna use it to destroy each other. So like, he just kind of kept it like looking at himself. Um, another thing <coughs> that he studied uh, was the study of optics. Uh, a big reason why why this philosopher is like. Like different from uh, all the metaphysics philosophers, it's because he wanted to create a connection between his studies and like real world, real world type of a scenario, like daily life uh, things. Um, in twelve ninety two, he died of sickness and age, and um, this kind of like the main thing that I well, not all the facts about him is that he, even though he believed in metaphysics or like he studied that, he did it in a different way, like than the rest. So Bacon's claim and arguments. Um, he doesn't really have a claim, but I found this quote of him. For the things of this world cannot be made known without a knowledge of mathematics. Um, this part explains why he wanted to make connections between his fields of study and um, like life and like day-to-day -day actions. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, he, he was a Francis Franciscan. Even though he believed in God, he wanted to make connections between scientific research and everyday life. Um, he was called Dr. Mirabilis or Marvelous, and he was he's considered the first modern scientist because of, cause of the, cause all, all the time he spent in his uh, yeah in his uh, science labs and stuff. Um, yeah, so he was deeply rooted in Christian principles, so he really like. While he was teaching, he was still like religious and stuff, but like another, like another big fact of him, fact fact that he was doing was he was trying to he like he just spent a lot of his time in his lab like he would spend up to like thirteen hours out of the day like he would spend a lot of time and he did that for like a while twenty some years. Big's opposition, so uh, his opposition is quite uh, direct. It's uh, this guy Richard Rufus Conroe. It's unknown he was born, but he died in 1260. Um, there's not really any reason why they're like, 
well, not, not enemies, but the only reason why it's opposition is because they studied at the same university, sorry, they taught at the same university, and, he, and this guy, uh, Richard Ro uh, Rufus of Cornwall, was really good with developing speeches, so he, his lectures were like really good, and um, he got a lot of like, I don't want to say popularity, but like, he got he got a lot of acknowledgement for it, and Bacon did not agree with what he, what he was doing. He kind of lived in, you know, Asher Stern with more than words. It's like if you're not doing any research, you're not doing anything to further prove what you're saying, then you're not really like developing your craft properly. So that's probably the only uh, reason why they did not agree with each other. Um, I want to talk about yeah, basically. Uh, I don't want to spoil and uh, Haley's philosopher or anything, but uh, since we analyzed, well, basically, Bacon and Aquinas, their similarities are that both philosophers were religious but didn't follow their religion all the way or a different way. Um, this basically means that, like both of them, both of those philosophers really wanted to make like a change to society. Well, not really a change, but like, they wanted society to think differently. While this guy just wanted to like, um, it was more like an individual type of success, and um, yeah, like basically the the only way what why why this philosopher should say is because they want country and society. Bigger picture type of thing. But, yeah. Okay. Thank you.